Okay, so we're going to anneal a 162 grain 7mm SST projectile. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to use a pair of uh, very cheap poly grips. These ones here um, have got uh, quite soft jaws so that they won't mar the projectile. And I'm only going to hold them very, very loosely. There we go. We can use the um, poly grips as a heat sink. Now I'm only going to anneal just forwards of the um, of the cantilever. So I'm going to start this way, holding the projectile slightly upright. We need a really long flame from that candle. Rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. Done. Before the projectile melts. Set that aside and let that cool naturally. It's a Okay, so the projectile is now um, cooled down and um, I've cleaned it up with a rag and it's come up quite fine. If you want to, mark the uh, red plastic tip with a black vivid and that will um, just indicate which ones are annealed versus which ones aren't annealed. If you want to double anneal it, then go for it. You can do it again. And um, I'll double anneal this one so you can have another look at it and we'll zoom the camera in a little bit closer. Rotating that very slowly. Get two overboard, and the tip will melt. Very good. Okay, so I'm just going to mark the tip of, of the um, SST with a black marker pen. And while I'm doing this, just one point to go over with these. Um, SSTs, not all will benefit from annealing, so um, make sure you choose an SST that is long for calibre with a high sectional density. It's not going to work on a 130 grain 270 SST for example, they'll blow up no matter what you do if, you, they, if you're using them at um, close ranges. But the annealing process works on the um, long ones like this 162 grain SST in 7mm, it works really well on the 150 grain SST in 270 and also on the um, 180 grain 30 caliber SST. It helps them with both penetration and expansion at long ranges so it's good all around.